So now we're talking about how to design the conversation. You know, if you have a conversation with a buddy of yours, you're probably not going to spend a whole lot of time designing it. It has a natural flow. When you're designing a bot, which is a rules-based bot, you really have to think about at each step of the way what you're saying, what you're expecting the uh, user to understand, and what you expect them to get. This is called the conversation flow. As opposed to when you're talking to your buddy, if you're dealing with a bot, the conversation flow has to be designed up front. It starts with a welcome message, and the welcome message has to ultimately convey to the visitor the scope and the intent of the bot. What, what will this bot give me? Why should I start it? If the welcome message isn't a welcoming message, you're not going to get very many visitors. Once they accept the welcoming message and they uh, accept your invitation to interact with the bot, from there on it's your job to design a navigation flow that is going to keep them moving through the bot. This is going to make sense, it's going to have a logical sequence, and they, they can know at any point in time where they are and where they are going. There's another dimension to designing the conversation, and that is the interface and, and informational design of it. And we're going to be uh, getting into the information architecture a little bit, meaning in what sequence do you need what information in order to uh, keep the bot moving, and uh, where you're capturing that information. In the next section, we're going to talk about media and copyright, which is the content and message. So this section is really about designing the conversation flow without getting into wordsmithing or making everything work perfect. So when you're dealing with a chatbot, we've identified that people who have a bad experience with a chatbot tend to lose any desire to interact with them in the future, and people with that experience are going to try their best to get to a human as quickly as possible. People that are insecure about what the chatbot offers will also try to get to a human because well, let's face it, as human beings, we're kind of used to talking to other humans and less likely to be used to talking to computers that take things very literally. First rule of developing the flow of the conversation is get me to the goal with minimal choices, meaning don't ask me questions that are not pertinent to what it is I'm trying to achieve. I want to have the bare bones number of questions that are necessary so that you are confident that you're recommending the correct solution for me. You also want to uh, try to minimize jump offs. The jump off is basically when somebody in the middle of the bot decides to quit and go somewhere else, do something else. So you want to minimize jump offs by making sure that every step of the way you are providing business value to the customer, meaning it's fairly obvious to the customer or at least the customer can recognize how they are moving forward in the conversation and not getting stuck. Because of that, you know, and because people have that desire to talk to people, Give them that option. Offer them the ability to do that whenever it makes sense in the, in the decision-making process. Consider keeping that talk to human option available on many different levels. If there are any choices that people have to make that are not obvious, choices that, well, I'd have to think about uh, what I really want there, make sure that you have the ability, that you offer the user the ability to ask for help. Ask for an explanation. Let them tell you why you need this particular choice and how it is going to help guide you to your ultimate goal. Above all, make sure that your bot doesn't waste my time as the visitor by asking extraneous questions or you know, things uh, about, uh, that are outside of the goal of the, of the bot. There is a theory about designing chatbots when you deal with AI that you're trying to make them kind of quasi-human so they have a lot of chit-chat and things like that. And I acknowledge that chit-chat is very important in human interaction. However, if I'm dealing with a rules-based bot, I am going to minimize chit-chat because the robot is not, or the bot is not, intelligent enough to make intelligent chit-chat, to make it sound in any way, shape, or form convincing that uh, the effort to do that is extremely high. That would be in the domain of AI NLP bots, but not in the domain of rules-based chat bots. Let's think about that optimal sequence of the choices. How you sequence the choices is really important in the bot. But the problem is, it kind of depends. It depends on what your business goal is. I mean, the purpose, the general purpose of your bot. So if you're looking for a lead generation bot, then what you're really trying to do is get the customer to reveal their contact data, give you their contact data, give you enough information that if you now turn this over to a, a salesperson, they would be able to know what to, uh, what to uh, get in contact with the customer for. In a lead generation bot, if that's the business purpose of this bot, 
you're more likely to have very limited interaction with the customer before you start gathering their name, their email, their address, things like that, uh, as well as what it is they're really looking for. If you're dealing with a sales bot, that it means the bot is designed to sell a product. They should be ordering by the time, the, the outcome of the bot should be, they are placing an order, they are getting your product. In that case, what you wanna really try to do is try to get only enough information to make sure you're guiding them to the correct product. So the contact information isn't nearly as important as understanding what features they want or how they would uh, recognize the correct product so that you can guide them to that. Uh, some websites make a profit by keeping your eyeballs on the screen. That, is, that are things like the social media platforms and things like that. And so if you're designing a bot for that, you, if your real, uh, real objective is to keep them occupied with your page, with your website, with your uh, uh, whatever it is you're showing them as long as possible, uh, then your sequence of steps has to kind of be more of a teasing, a tantalizing them to give them the feeling, the desire to keep on engaging with you. The only people that can tell you what the, the true objectives of the goals are of the bot are going to be the business community, salespeople, the trainers, whoever it is that is driving the, the bot process from the business side. This is not a decision that should be left up to the bot designer as to what the ultimate goal of the bot is. That has to be defined by higher level management to make sure that the bot is actually going to provide value to the company as well as to the user. So what is it that really distinguishes a good bot from a bad bot? What are the bots that really make sense, where people are very willing to share information with them, where people trust them to be using the information to help them go where they wanna go and not to be misusing them? Well, obviously the images and the words that they are being confronted with are going to have a major role in that. But before we design the images and the words, we need to think about the conversation flow and what we're really gonna be uh, trying to do here is figure out how can you represent the conversation flow. It turns out this is actually not a non-trivial decision because it has to fit your way of thinking, it has to help you organize your thoughts to be able to come up with the brilliant words and images that are going to win the customer over. A lot of people like use case diagrams as a way of representing a conversation flow. We'll show you an example of that in a second. Others prefer to explain the flow in the form of a table or a spreadsheet, uh, something that actually enables you in each column to distinguish between something the bot is saying and something the human is saying. Ultimately, uh, we realize that conversations are a back and forth. It's a dialogue. If I uh, can express the uh, rules of engagement, if you will, if I can express how I'm going to ask a question, what I expect from the user as options, as answers and how I'm going to branch from based on those options into continuing the discussion in different ways, then a spreadsheet or a table might be a good tool. The tool that we're gonna be uh, going into more depth on is a decision tree. And decision trees are very powerful because if you think about it, there is a component of a structured conversation that can be represented fairly easily in a decision tree. So if you're comfortable with decision trees, uh, that's a great tool to be using. And it so happens that that is the tool that we have used when we were creating the Baxby bot that we're using as our example here. We're going to show you an example of each of these three and also in particular spend more time working on the decision tree because as I said, that's one we're using in our example.